A bomb explosion has occurred in Maidigridi, capital of Bornu State, on Salka Eve. The explosion was heard by residents while they prepared for the Ida Kabir celebrations. While confirming the incident, the Bornu State Commissioner of Police, Aliyu Muhammad, said one person was killed while 16 others sustained injuries. Aliyu told newsmen that the cause of the explosions are yet to be known, but detectives have since been sent to find out. Recall that suspected Boko Haram terrorist also attacked the convoy of the state governor Babagana Zulum on Wednesday on his way to Baga. The governor blasted the Nigerian army for not defeating Boko Haram yet in the area, despite claiming to have destroyed the terrorist group. Joining us now is a security expert, Tony Ofoyeto. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's go straight to the significance of the special security patrol uh, by security agents as ordered by the IGP during this festive period. The... Hello? Yes. What is the significance of the special security patrol um, ordered by the IGP uh, for the Salah celebrations? Uh, the, uh, uh, the specific instruction of the IGP within this festive period. Well, I, I think basically the main thing is that uh, in most cases within festive period, it's always a, a red alert period. And that is the period that um, the terrorists tend to want to establish their own signature. So naturally, it is expected that all security agencies must be at alert. Now, and when you are talking of being at a lot, you are going to have a special focus on um, a crowded areas, religious areas, market areas, uh, worship centers, basically, uh, so that we don't have a reoccurrence of some of the incidents that happened some years ago, where mosques are bombed, where churches are bombed, and the like. Uh, I think, basically, if you also look at what is happening in the Northeast presently, uh, you see that there is a renewal of uh, the and launch or the attack from the insurgents. So it makes it very imperative that um, all security agencies are expected to be at alert. And even the individuals themselves now, uh, in as much as uh, we want to facilitate with those of, of our Muslim brothers and the like, um, this is also one of the times to be at extreme alert uh, because the terrorists basically are looking for areas where they can make a noise with a dastardly attack. Uh, if you look at what happened recently where the governor was attacked. Now that is to also demystify the might of the military. It's a psychological operation. Uh, and it also speaks a lot of volume to the extent that uh, if the governor's convoy can be attacked, who can't be attacked? Uh, I think that basically that is to, uh, one of the reasons why the uh, security agencies, the IGP and the like, would have to put their men on them. Uh, you know, a red alert perpetually, not just for the festive period to live. Even after the festive period, there is better. If you look at Baga, Baga is more or less like a deserted area as we speak. And uh, the governor's convoy was passing through, and before you knew what was uh, happened, he was um, attacked. Uh, about 16 of them were injured, and um, I'm sure you saw what happened uh, there. Um, I think basically also that the deployment of technology is um, you know long overdue, especially even within this festive period. There's nothing wrong in a situation where uh, government can deploy drones all over the state. There could be drones. The police can look at the possibility of high power drones. There are drones that can move as much as five thousand kilometers. Uh, there are drones that can you know can move within neighborhoods. So it's not just to say that, okay, let people be. It's also the responsibility of the government to ensure the security of its people. So when they deploy drones, drones to villages, drones to outskirts, you know, if we have a central control system, now you now link that central control system to a response team. Now, in the event of you identify any threats through the drone, which is a surveillance system, it is very, it, it, it also plays its extra and assist because uh, when you talk about area surveillance, area surveillance gives the necessary information to the field operation. You, you mentioned the attack on the convoy of the governor of Borne State. Um, 
and he has come up to have this in this uh, exchange with the military over the fight against terrorism the question is when the leader of the state and the security experts are at loggerheads in this manner what is the implication for the fight for security in that particular area? Well, Aaron, you know, like I said, when the terrorists want to de-emphasize your military uh, might, uh, structure and uh, integrity, what they do is they uh, look for what is called hard target. Now, in the implication of um, uh, attacking what you categorize as hard target is to the extent that it increases the fear on the uh, soft target. It also emphasizes the purported victory of um, the military. Uh, don't forget that recently there have been news of, um, you know, uh, the military having victory, and there has also been the counter news of uh, the military being demoralized and then um, there's no encouragement and a multitude of them decided to uh, opt out of uh, the, uh, the profession, so to say. So if, if you look at it vis-a-vis -vis, um, the attack on the governor's convoy, uh, the truth is that uh, the, uh, some of us see it as um, some level of compromise. Uh, some of us see it as, um, you know, um, some level of um, participating criminals even being among the governors and um, Convoy, because the truth is, it is very, very difficult to have a brother to, to attack a governor in such a manner and within such a, a duration. Uh, but having said so, I, I, I think it is also now high time for the government to look at the possibility of having the service chief change. Uh, the signature of the service chief as it is now is well known and familiar to the terrorists. They know their style, they know their strategy, they know their approach to counter terrorism. They know most likely what they will do next. And the reason is because for the past five years, they've been doing it as such. Now, it doesn't mean that bringing another service chief would actually give, you know, something fundamentally different overnight. But it would help to do what to destabilize the terrorists. And it will also help to bring in new energy new right. enthusiasm into right. uh, the fight against terrorism as it is now. All right, there was a blast um, in Borneo uh, yesterday, just days after the attack on the governor's convoy. Uh, what, what message do you think the government and security agents should be sending to people in that area to give them a sense that they are secured even after this attack as they go about celebrating um, the Ida Kabir? I, I think one of the responsibilities of the people in Bono and in the Northeast is that they are also failing to uh, execute it to the extent that that security is first of all their primary responsibility before that of the government. So what extent are the people there ready to cooperate with security agencies? To what extent are they ready to give them information? Because if you look at what is happening, these people are human beings. They are not spirits. But uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Alfayeto, you, you know them. there is something called, um, uh, there's a lot of persons that are saying these people might be fatigued after years of watching and seeing their people get killed and the assurances from the army doesn't seem to be keeping them protected. Um, when you talk about the help that the people are given, um, are you putting that into consideration? And that again goes to my question of what the army and the government can do now to reassure the people in order for them to be able to have the trust to give the information that is required to capture the terrorists? Well, I, I think it is two ways um, two way side. And um, I agree to the extent that um, the security agencies over time have failed the people. And I also want to also say that the people themselves have also over time failed themselves. Now, the fact that you have one or two people that are compromised in the security agency is not an excuse to accommodate the terrorists. The terrorists are worse than security agencies, no matter how you put it, although they come on the platform of ethnicity and religion. Now, over time, who are they killing? They are killing the people. So it means that it is expected that the people should be able to do what? 
work with the military formation, work with the security formation to be able to ensure their own safety. Another thing is that I think it is also expected that the people should speak out. Now, if you give information and information is breached, and as a result of that breach, there are casualties, you speak out. Now, when you speak out, it now puts the security agencies on the defense. Even the average Nigerian, you and I will ask questions on that. Were you giving information? How did S and Z get to know? That is one approach to it. The community themselves can also raise their own, you know, indigenous, their own uh, protective system. They own little security. Now that security can be maybe like a little committee that works with the security agencies within their community there. Uh, there is no way you are fighting against a uh, terrorist that you are going to get this in the military. I'm, I'm not sure it's possible. So all whatever it is, they just have to find a way. All they need to do is apply the instrumentality of proper information. Follow up their information to the highest order. And all right, Mr. Antonio Poeto. Thank you so much for joining us on the news and giving us some insight to what is happening and how we can move forward when it comes to security, especially during this festive period. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So have a good day. Thank <music> you.